Rex here, along with Lou, we're going to talk about spotting the shot and how a spotter effectively tells exactly where that bullet is going. This is kind of a follow-up video to the spotter-sniper dynamics that we've been discussing and taking this one step further. Mm -hmm. Now what's going to happen in real life is you're going to get everything adjusted just perfect, uh, but uh, something is going to happen that you didn't foresee and you might possibly miss, okay? And uh, in that case, you're going to have to apply correction for the miss. So you're going to have to see exactly where you're hitting. And uh, the challenge to that deal is sometimes it's like really hard to discern exactly where the bullet is going. And there are certain things that happen that make you think it might be going in a different spot. So that's the topic for today. How to spot the shot. Exactly. Yep. It's hard to tell with the camera. Yep. I'm not gonna you. lie. <laughs> yep. Not sure about that one. Ready? Yep. That one hit. Did you see it? Yep. One more. Ooh. One strike. Ready? Hit. Roger that. On site. Ready? Hit. Ready? Pretty good hit there. All right. Well, the first thing that we should discuss is uh, there's two main ways, I think, that folks typically spot where you're hitting. So just uh, from, a, from a normal dude's point of view, what would you think that a guy would probably, like most people, if they're shooting just out in the hill, what? How do you spot where you're hitting? You probably guess where the bullet, the little explosion came from. Yeah, right. The impact. So, an impact is one way that you can spot kind of where you're hitting. However, that's actually for long-range precision shooting, not really an effective means of determining exactly where the bullet hit. It is one of the means. Um, for long-range precision shooting, you're going to be observing what they call bullet trace. And you got this bullet flying through the air at supersonic speeds and it's uh, creating a compression wave 
and that compression creates what they call a vapor trail. Remember on that movie, The Matrix, when they're shooting at Keanu? And he's like, we're all you! And he's like dodging the bullets, right? And the, you got the bullet trace. That's actually kind of exactly what that looks like. And you can see it. But you have to have your spotting optics set up properly in order to see it. And uh, we'll go over a lot of ways that folks maybe get that set up incorrectly. So if you're not seeing the bullet trace, we'll try to get you as best we can how to get positioned correctly to, to see it. Um, and the reason that splash is not a reliable method is because uh, there's a lot of dynamics that happen when in thermal ballistics. When a bullet explodes, ricochets uh, before debris materializes enough to be seen at long distances, um, there's a lot of weird stuff, and we'll discuss that in detail too. When you say splash, that's referring to the uh, dust cloud or whatever. Yes, the poof, the, the poof. poof, yeah, where the bullet hits. Poof, you see dirt fly, you see a poof of dirt. Now, that's what we're gonna call splash. So, when you're doing long range shooting, you're gonna have the shooter land down behind his rifle and the spotter will try to get his spotting scope as much behind the shooter as possible, okay? Now, if the shooter is spotting his own trace, if there's only a shooter and you don't have a spotter, then the shooter will spot his own bullet trace. But in order for a spotter to do that, you cannot be land next to the guy, okay? Ideally, it should be behind the rifle. Yeah, your field of view must include the path of the bullet. So you have to be on the path of the bullet. So if you get immediately behind the shooter and just a little bit over the top, you're gonna to have a real nice clear, clear view of that bullet trace coming up. So that's the number one uh, thing that I see probably out there with long range shooters. A lot of spotters set up kind of like at a 90 degree angle to the shooter. They just kind of lay there like they're both on the firing line. And you wanna be on like a five o'clock position, just enough to the side where you can see past him without getting too high. Or if you do have a tripod, and it's not a situation that warrants concealment, you can just set up the tripod way behind the shooter and just look right over the top of his head. That's fine, that's actually even a better way to see bullet tricks. But you have to be positioned to where that bullet goes in front of the spotting scope. Because if you're to the side, that bullet's going to the side, and you ain't gonna see it until it's in its descending leg of the trajectory, in which case you're gonna miss it because it's just a and you won't see it. Bullet trace can be hard to see. But it does exist. It, it does it, exist. It, it's not imaginary. It's not like the unicorn. It, right. It's not pretend. It's, but, it's a real deal. But it's one of those things that kind of does sound pretend until you actually see it. Yeah. It's amazing to watch. That's what a lot of people just giggle the first time they see bullet trace. It's actually kind of cool. But uh, what happens is when this compression wave, you know, creates a vapor trail, is if you got wind, if you and there's different atmospheric conditions that are more conducive to making a more visible bullet trace. So not all your conditions are gonna give you the best. Some days you can't see it, and you might have to rely on bullet splash or observing impact. But usually, if you got stuff set up correctly, you'll see the trace. So you need to be, be behind the line of sight of the of the where the axis of the bore as much as possible. Then another thing that you can do is the spotter will adjust his spotting scope and focus it in on an object like 60% of the way to the target or 50 halfways there. And you're gonna get sharply focused in on a bush or a piece of grass or whatever is laying there. And then you're gonna go back up and you're gonna look at the target. And you're gonna be expecting the bullet trace is gonna come up through the ascending leg of the trajectory and then it's gonna kinda of come up to its max ordinate and then it's gonna come down descending again. Now, hopefully you're gonna be able to see that bullet the whole way out there, but when it comes up, uh, to its max ordinate, that's the point of the trajectory where the bullet's kind of flying straight away from you because on the ascending leg, it's moving up real fast. It's, it's like real fast. Boom! Like at a thousand yards, it's like only takes a short amount of time. And we'll play video for you here. But uh, so as the bullet gets up into its uh, max ordinate, that's where it kind of stabilizes for a second. Like for skeet shooters, you want to shoot at the clay when it reaches its max ordinate because that's when it's moving the slowest. So that's the best place you're going to expect to really pick up clearly on the bullet trace. And then once you spot it with your eye, you're going to see a slight disturbance of vapor trail in the air. You can then follow it in on its descending leg and see exactly where it's hitting. That is the primary means 
of spotting where the round is hitting, okay? Is observing bullet trace. It'll give you an exact pinpoint within like a small area of exactly where that bullet hit. But uh, you want to be focused at something that's halfway down range because that's going to basically give you clear focus of bullet trace at the max ordinate. So you want to be focused in on the max ordinate of the bullet as it's halfway down range. That makes good sense. Yep.